Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to our service. Uh, welcome to those who are joining us in church and to those who are joining us online. Just some notices to draw your attention to. Um, firstly, our Bible study is on Wednesday at 8 p.m. and that will be in the committee room. And then uh, next Sunday, uh, Sunday the 15th of May, our morning service is Holy Communion and it's for continuing on our theme of Christian, uh, open to the, to the Spirit and children go straight to the hall for Sunday school and that's uh, 10 to 11 on Facebook and then later on it will be on YouTube. And then uh, if you have any items for the feedback, then if you can bring those either to the church or to the rectory, and we'll make sure that they get uh, to Enniskillen. Uh, we're hoping to have a, a, a parish lunch uh, to celebrate the Platinum Jubilee, and that will be on Sunday the 5th of June uh, in the parish hall. And there's, there's a sign-up sheet at the back of the church, and um, so if you put your name, your contact number, uh, whether you want an adult meal, a child's meal, uh, then uh, what, you, what you would like, whether it be roast beef uh, or turkey and ham. Uh, and there's a limited number, so the limited number is 100. Uh, so it's first come, first serve, and uh, you'll see that five pounds has to be paid. So that's the confirmation is the five pounds. So that's the sign up sheets at the back. So we have our invitation to worship next time. We begin, first of all, by uh, having our Easter greeting. Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We, we will rejoice in God. God. Lord, direct our thoughts, help us to pray, and lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Come, Come and ask us begin our service by singing Be Thy My Vision.
And so we confess our sins to God our Father. Let us pray. And together we say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the colic for the fourth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in Him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where He reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading is from Acts 11, beginning at verse 19. Now, those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among the Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And before the old age talk, we sing beneath the cross and Jesus be the center.
Let's pray. Father, I want to pray that you take my lips and use them, that you'd speak through them, for your name's sake and for your glory. Amen. We're going to uh, show a short uh, skit, and it's to do with what makes someone a Christian. So this morning we're going to be talking about... Who are you? I'm a chicken. What makes you a chicken? Because I can talk and I lay eggs. That doesn't make you a chicken. This morning we're going to be talking about... you a plane? Because I have wings and I go meow. That doesn't make you a plane. This morning we're going to be talking about one friend we call him Jesus. Who are you? I'm a Christian. What makes you a Christian? Because I sing and I read the Bible and I go to church. That doesn't make you a Christian. What does make you a Christian? Just a, a short skit, just get us to think about things, because uh, we know that plucking and laying an egg doesn't necessarily make you a chicken. If, if you go onto YouTube, you'll find a, a parrot that does a great pluck, and it can obviously lay eggs, and it's not a chicken. And uh, we know from years ago how many, how many uh, men we saw strapping wings, wings onto them, uh, and uh, sometimes even an engine and trying to be an airplane, but they weren't airplanes. Uh, and, and so what makes someone a Christian? Going to church, reading our Bibles, praying, those th things don't make us Christians. They're things that Christians should do, but they don't make someone a Christian. So what makes someone a Christian? First of all, we need to look at this word Christian. And to help us to understand things, I've got some uh, words that are, are uh, some names that are going to come up on the screen. And what do these names mean? So, Green and White Army, if you hear that, what do you think about? Football and the Northern Ireland uh, football team, the Tartan Army? Scotland. Scotland. <laughs> uh, the Copites. Anyone support Liverpool? Because if you support Liverpool, uh, fans of Liverpool are called Copites, which apparently is to do with one of the stands that is called Cop, uh, and uh, so they're called Copites. Um, Trekkies? Star Trek, so if you're a, a real fan of Star Trek, then, then people will call fans of Star Trek Trekkies. Warsies? Star Wars? Yes, if you're a real fan of Star Wars, people will call you Warsies. And so these are, are nicknames, nicknames that people give depending on what someone follows. And the name Christian wasn't given by Christians, but was given by other people. Up to the point in Acts 11, eh, the, those who were followers of Jesus were seen almost like a a sect amongst Judaism, because they were all Jews. But then once Greeks, those who were Gentiles like us, began to believe, then they had to come up with another name. And so the name was given Christian. They're Christian ones. They're ones who follow Christ. And so the name was given first in Antioch, as we read in the passage. The Collins Dictionary says that a person, a Christian, is a person who believes in and follows Jesus Christ. So that first thing, believe. In the passage, what do we see? Um, that those who, who came from Cyprus and Cyrene, they were telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. And the Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. And so, it's important that we see that there needs to be belief first. For someone to be a Christian, to be truly a Christian, there has to be belief in Jesus Christ, believing in who He is and believing in what He has done, and then turning to the Lord. 
turning to Him. That's the sense of repentance, the understanding that going one way, which is away from God, and then realizing that to follow Jesus means to turn around, uh, to no longer go our own way, but to go His way. To believe in Him means to put our full weight in Him. You know, there are many fans who I'm sure will believe that their football team are going to win, but that sometimes doesn't happen. But for belief in Jesus, we can be sure that what He says, that will happen. We can put our full life on Him because of what He says is always true. Often Jesus would begin by saying, I tell you the truth. We can trust in Him. The second thing is then belong. A great number of people were brought to the Lord. When someone becomes a Christian, that word Christian literally means to belong to Christ as well. And so we need to understand that when we become a Christian, we're no longer our own. Now, fans, they join a club and they're part of a club, but when they go away from the football, people wouldn't necessarily know that they are part of that club unless they have their scarf on and the hat on. But we, in a greater sense, we belong not to a club, we belong to Jesus. We belong to Him. When we come to faith, we're meant to understand that Jesus bought us with the price of His blood, and therefore we belong to Him, not to ourselves. When you look at John's gospel, and we, there's a point in John chapter 3 where Jesus is baptizing people, and those who had followed John the Baptist, they come to him and say, that man who, who was with you on the other side, well, he's baptizing more people, and everyone's going to him. And they were probably expecting John to be annoyed at this, but John says, the bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who waits for the bridegroom longs and waits for his voice and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and is now complete. You see, he believed and understood that anyone who followed Jesus belonged to Jesus. The word bride or the name bride is one of the names that's given for the church. And so, if we are a Christian, then we're part of the bride of Christ. We belong to Him, and therefore we should be living for Him. And the last thing is behave. And unfortunately, you, sometimes as, as Christians and as the church, we expect people to behave a certain way before they come to Christ. But that's as, as we did in the skit, how we behave doesn't make us a Christian. How we behave should come because we are Christians. And so, the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch because people around them saw the way that they lived, and they knew that these people were followers of Christ, followers of the Messiah. And so, they called them what they saw their behavior to be. They were followers of the way in another part. That's another term that they were, they, were to, they were given. They were followers of the way. And so, for us, the way we behave should show other people around us that we are Christians. And that should change as we mature as Christians that we should become more and more like Jesus. So, yes, going to church doesn't make us a Christian, but going to church is something that's expected of those who are followers of Jesus. You see, if we're part of the bride of Christ, and if Jesus loves the bride, the church, then if we don't have fellowship with other Christians, we're saying to Jesus, I want to be part of the bride, but I don't like the rest of them. And if Jesus loves the bride and all of us, he wants us to grow in love for each other as well. And we know how difficult that can be because 
when it comes even to our own families, people that we are related to who have the same blood as we talk about, we have fallouts. And there are difficulties, there are personality problems and so on. But with the church, we're meant to understand that even though we're different and sometimes we don't get on with each other, that that doesn't change our responsibility to meet together, to love each other, to encourage one another as long as it's called today. And that those hopefully outside should see that the way we live our lives increasingly is becoming more like Jesus, and that they can truly then call us Christians, ones who follow Christ, ones who are seeking to be more like Jesus. And so, over the next couple of months, we're going to be looking at what it truly means to be a Christian, and looking at different things through Acts of the Apostles to see what the church was like then, and and what can we learn about what it means to be the church today and to be a Christian today. But let's look at those three things, that we need to be those who believe in Jesus, put our full trust in Him. Are we doing that? Are we trusting Him for our finances, our family, whatever's in our life? Are we trusting Him for that? That'll be seen by how we pray. When we've got a problem, do we pray and ask the Lord to help our family, our finances, the things we're going through? Or are we trying it on our own? Are we those who belong, who recognize that our bodies are not our own? That as Paul says, we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in us. We no longer belong to ourselves, but we belong to Him. And then is our behavior showing other people that we are followers of Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank You that we see in the story in Antioch how Your grace was upon the people, and Your hand was upon the people. And we pray that, Lord, that Your hand and Your grace would be seen in our lives, would be seen in this church. And that we truly would be your bride. That others around would see the way that we live our lives and be attracted to you. And Lord, would you teach us and show us what it truly means to be a follower of you. Help us this week. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. So we would be empowered to make a difference in our world. We ask this in your name. Amen. So we, in response, we sing, My heart is filled with thankfulness, and, and the last verse, for, for every day I have on earth is given by the King, so I will give my life, my all, to love and follow Him.
remain standing and we affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we have our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Father God, we pray for your children across Africa. Many suffer persecution, poverty, and hunger. These problems appear set to increase as the population of Africa grows, with predictions that went from 1.2 billion today, the continent will be home to 2.5 billion people by 2050. Yet simultaneously, the church here is growing. And if this continues, nearly half of all Christians on earth will live in Africa. Thank you that Jesus' kingdom is increasing and for the hope that our people not yet born will praise the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Lord, we thank you that the remaining civilians have been able to leave the steel plant in Mariupol and we continue to pray for peace in Ukraine. As Russia prepare for the Victory Day tomorrow, celebrating their victory over Germany in World War II. Open the eyes of all Russians, revealing the truth about what is going on in Ukraine. Bring the conviction of your Holy Spirit so it may be a day of mourning and repenting rather than a day of celebrating. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own country, that you would help political parties to work together. The spirit of humility so that they would look to you for wisdom and guidance in solving the problems in our nation. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the church worldwide, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that your glory may be proclaimed through our lives. We pray for those known to us in need of your touch, and in the silence we bring them to your throne of grace. Stretch out your hand to bring healing to those who are sick, comfort for those who mourn, and hope to those in despair. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final uh, hymn is, O Church Arise.
have our closing prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, you emptied yourself, taking the form of a servant. Through your love, make us servants of one another. Lord Jesus Christ, for our sake you became poor. May our lives and gifts enrich the life of your world. And we say together, Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. So before uh, we say the grace together, just to remind you that there is uh, tea and coffee at the back, and we're just going to give thanks for our continued fellowship and for what we're going to eat and drink. And so, Father, we thank you for the chance to meet together, for the freedom to do that in this place. We pray you'd continue to bless our fellowship and bless what we're going to eat and drink. We ask this in your name. Amen. So we turn to all and we say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So every blessing, uh, Lorna and Beatrice are going to play us out. <laughs>